<laughs> up for months on end with supply lines. Trench and, warfare. No. Yeah, but Phoenix One were able to hold out and win those last few team fights and end up taking the game. So we have now entered picks and bands for game three. Phoenix One have shown that they can wait it out if the game goes long enough. Energy now know that this might be something that they'll have to shut down a lot sooner. Azir and Shen again banned away from Pyrian and Zig. Vladimir and Karma, as expected, banned away from Energy. Now the big question is, do you let Pyrian get that Cassiopeia once again? A late game insurance policy. Yeah, I mean, he came up huge. The damage he was dealing in those fights. Also a thing that's really underappreciated in these fights and hard to see is the grounded effect where he throws out the miasma and it stops flashes and dashes. So when he throws it out, they can't actually flash away and get out of there. So it's big for locking people down. So we do have some adaptions to the bands. Bard, banned away from gate, landing some humongous tempered fates in those fights. Stalling things out just long enough for his team. And Rek'Sai, banned away from Santorin all over the map in the previous two games that he was able to play it. But Energy, after giving Rise the old hover, decide to deny Zig his trundle. And with Shen banned away, you gotta wonder. Yeah, fall down the tier list a little bit for him. Don't know if he'll play the Gnar. It's a good lane bully against the trundle. Mm -hmm. uh, later on though, it is way squishier, even when in Mega Gnar. Especially since you build a good bit of damage as well. Now we'll see if he decides to go for it. 30 seconds left for Phoenix One to look for their first picks in this final game of the day. We'll see if they decide to prioritize that top lane as they have been wont to do in their first two games. Zig currently giving Gnar the old hover, so he might just decide to lock that in. But Zyra did Left fall up. through. We know Kiwi Kid will take that without hesitation, but Gate going to be showing us that he can play it just as well. At the Bard, returning to the ban list from Energy was what they banned in game one. They dropped the Sivir ban for the Shen ban. And now the Zyra picked up here. Ended up dropping off the ban of the Victor. Of the Victor back up there. Yeah, we'll see if GBM decides to take it. Phoenix one on red side means that Pyrian could look for that counter pick. Right now, Energy are going to have to show something. Is it going to be Santorin's jungle? Is it going to be AD carry to deal with that? AD carry and support to match out Zig and Nori. We're going to find out. So if you want like a high priority mid laner, you go Victor or Rise here. Yeah. And then you also go with your jungler. Wow, it's almost like you do this for a living. <laughs> almost. It's just because they have AD carry and support, right? Oh, yeah. So, and you're going to have to blind pick your mid laner anyway. So Victor locked in, and it looks like Santorin's actually going to swap it over to Elise in this game with that Rek'Sai band away. So far, each of the members of Energy picking for themselves going down that tier list. That's true. They round out and end up being that way at the very end. Pyrian, though, interested to see if he goes with the Rise or with the Cassiopeia this game. Yeah, the late game insurance policy. One of the downsides of Cassiopeia, if you get caught in a gravity field, you're gonna die pretty quickly. Yeah, probably a downside to a lot of people. A lot of champions. Yeah. But Zyra already locked in, just shuffling through some of those picks. Looks like they're gonna commit back to the Rise and Hecarim for Inori. Yeah, the Hecarim for Inori, he wasn't really heavily ganking the lanes early and using his Ghost or trading Ghost for Flash cooldowns and then revisiting lanes. Uh, and his build was definitely a lot more defensive for a Hecarim. Wasn't going for the things like the Trinity Force early on and then went for like Spirit Visage, for his Heart looking to build. Oh, interested to see if he adapts it because his team may not be as far behind this game. We will see. And that could be a top lane rise, could be a mid rise. Cassiopeia yeah. could still be another pick that comes through here. Very strong scaling from Phoenix One. And with the disengage from Zyra, they would be much more comfortable in a defensive position than the previous game. But now it's up to Energy. 
to pick up that 80 carry and support. Twitch still open for OQ. We'll see if he decides to return to it. Three seconds left on the counter. Currently, Jin and Braum hovered. They decide, yeah, they're going to lock it in. Yeah, Jin Trundle is actually quite potent. Throw down the pillar, and then you can almost guarantee the W or the follow up with the ultimate. So, good pick there. Alongside the Braum, uh, not always perceived as the best combination to have the Braum alongside the Jin because it's kind of yeah. difficult for you to get the passive off with your fixed attack speed. But it is actually a rather good combo. Once you do get this stun off, you will actually get the follow-up W. You'll be able to actually mm. guard him while he's using his ultimate. So it's not as bad as people would think. We'll see how that bot lane goes for Mash and Gate. As now it's either mid or top for Phoenix One. This is going to decide where the rise ends up going. Pyrian instrumental yeah. in game two and in Maybe most of the wins. But oh, Cassiopeia yep. locked in. Cassiopeia top? No. Yeah, oh boy. Oh boy, against a trundle. Yeah. Ooh, that would be tricky. But it's probably rise top and Cassiopeia yeah. mid. It could be either way. I would actually not be surprised if it was a Cassiopeia top, uh, but you do want her to have Ghost more than you want Rise to have Ghost, so putting her in the mid lane. And the fact that Pyrian has played it multiple times now, I trust him to be the Cassiopeia guy as opposed to Zig. But they do have 10 more seconds to do so. Yeah, getting those scaling champions once again locked in for Phoenix One. This time, they might be taking a bit more of a defensive role with that disengaged Zyra flanking Hecarim, petrifying gaze on that Cassiopeia. Whereas Energy, on the other hand, looking to redeem themselves after having an advantage for nearly 54 minutes of a 54 minute and 30 second game. <laughs> that, yeah. That game is a game that energy they just want to win this series they yeah. want to win this game and erase what just happened there and then for p1 they want that game one to not matter for them and just have that series win yeah this series win would vindicate a lot of the criticism that has been thrown towards them so we'll see if they can pull it together one last time today get the vote out on twitter support the team of your choice Use hashtag NRG win or hashtag P1 win. Let us know who you think as we get into game for game number three between Energy and Phoenix One. The teams and the players are ready and the audience is silent. As we load on in, there it is. I showed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we load onto the rift. There's the egg silent. The, ten the tension is palpable. The reverse psychology. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what Phoenix One tried last game. Oh, yeah. we've, we've got the late game composition, <laughs> but we're going to be defensive. We're not going to do anything. Oh, we're so we're so weak. We're so defenseless. <laughs> Down 10,000 gold. You've taken our inhib. Anyway, uh, energy looks like they're going to go for an invade here. Uh, they do have Braum, so highly recommend going for it. Oh, clear the ward. They all attack, move into the bush, and GBM. 10 gold on GBM. Pinging the ward placements as well. And this gets kind of tr tricky because both Gate and Mash can no longer return to the safe side of the jungle for them. So <laughs> kind of had to back in that bush. Uh, and they have almost no coverage, so it's a little, yeah. a little scary. Volatile Spiderling from Santorin sees that they aren't under the turret, though they will be able to make it back in time. Yeah, they know the Zyro's down here, though, because... Hey, look, there's a bunch of seeds. Surprise! Yep. And now with Zig on the top side of the map, seems as though Phoenix One are going to be committed to the duo lane bottom. We saw a lane swap in game one, upside down lanes in game two. Seems like we might see another lane swap in this yeah. game three as Energy send their duo of OQ and Kiwi top. Yep. Rule of thumb, always swap against the Zyra. Make sure that you aren't against her because she can honestly just kind of RNG the lane as well with seed placement. Taking a look at the Mastery Storm Raider Surge for both Zig and GBM. Yeah, Storm Raider Surge for Rise. When you aren't mid and have the access to Ghost, it's a great mastery to have. And then the Storm Raider Surge for GBM. Oh, Pyrian with a good dodge. And he doesn't even have boots. Yep. And you'll never, he never will. Makes it so hard to read. You can't see where he's going to step. 
That's true. It's kind of uh, this makes it kind of tricky like that. Little little wily. Anyway, oh, good good damage trade for GBM. Yeah, and then he gets the Storm Raider Surge. He gets to run away. Uh, he will pretty much always have Storm Raider Surge on during a fight because he'll blow oh. ultimate. And Furion answers and back. Hey, hey, Papa, hold up, hold up. <laughs> time out, time out, guys. <laughs> GBM says, hold on. I, it, wasn't, it wasn't serious. <laughs> I'm getting wrecked. Uh, <laughs> one second, time out. Yeah, Pyrian did have a rather good lane in game number two. He looks very confident over the course of the laning phase, opening up a 20, 25, even 30 CS lead against GBM's rise. So we'll see if he can do something similar in this next set. But two and a half minutes in. And Phoenix One are looking for that series win. Again, this this is all about vindication for them. The fact that they've been through three weeks of nonstop losses with the occasional moral win. Taking a series here would be huge. Yeah, it would definitely boost their morale, and they'd be able to maybe surge up the standings. But, I mean, game two was not incredibly convincing. Mm -hmm. And, honestly, for your energy, you're rather worried. Because if you are the team that gives Phoenix one their first series, like, that does not bode well for the rest of your season. That makes it, honestly, really a lot of pressure there. Yeah. Like, th that's going to be kind of target for criticism there. And, like, just looking at Quas on his player cam, he... He's been performing really well, and he looks slightly frustrated right now. Mm -hmm. So very Not difficult. so frustrated. <laughs> Zig, you can see, getting nice and comfy. <laughs> Sleeps with his eyes open. He's, he's in this for the long haul. He knows. He's, he's got Rise, mid lane Cassiopeia. He's got all the time in the world, whereas Inori, on the other hand, maybe looking a bit drowsy after that first performance. Yeah, need to be able to stay relaxed, mm -hmm. but alert. Yes. To be fair, Phoenix won. Wake up. Re played remarkably. Uh, uh, <laughs> given the old nod. Uh, they, they played remarkably calm and cool. Despite the fact that they were down for so long, they were able to hold on and wait it out. Yeah, and they never had a fight where they lost and then the game was just done. They yeah. always got just a little bit back. There was that fight where they got too inhibbed maybe there could have been more taken from energy like that's going to be a fight that they'll have to go back and look at and say okay how much could we have actually gotten off of this mm -hmm. uh, how much could we have forced the issue and looks like we're getting back in yeah some very optimistic fans we're gonna look at kiwi first before we get back in yeah but then there we're we gonna go. look at oh some damage on gbm yeah so gbm is going to take the worst of this trade yeah the Deathfire touch and Pyrian walking up. Pyrian does have another potion available to him as well. So, again, this is the lane swap. So both of the duos are rushing down those tier one turrets as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's also the lane swap. So how your mid laner performs becomes incredibly important. And all right, that, <laughs> that's that's all right. That's pretty cool because. It's behind the Trundle and Elispa. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how? How? If it's still. They, by the power <laughs> of... <laughs> they put some work into that. Yeah. Anyway. But looks some, looking like they're uh, timed pretty similarly. Well, that top one, though, they have to wait another wave. Yeah, energy. They'll be able to get it, though. In just a few seconds. Should be timed rather similarly with Phoenix One. We'll see if they do decide to gift over full go. Oh, Q! Oh, gosh, he burned his heel Yep, to get away from that turret hit. Yep. Almost died. Had yeah. to burn his heel. He would have been dead. Yes. He would have been dead. And I mean, honestly, maybe it would have. He was just going to back anyway, so. Faster, faster than recalling. Uh, is it? Is it that early? As long as it's under eight seconds. It's possible. Well, I mean, then he doesn't have to walk away from the turret aggro as well, so... Yeah, well, and he takes point. an additional hit for the minions. Boom. It's all the minor <laughs> points. It may actually be if you don't have to walk away from turret aggro, <laughs> but... Blows his heal. May come back to bite them. We'll see. Actually, very surprised that Zig is not trying to get more of this wave before he backs. Yeah. Uh, because that's the advantage you get. When you get to 
uh, kill the turret a little bit faster, which is what happened with P1, you should be able to reap the rewards of getting a couple more minions. And Quas is actually the one who comes out on top. Ever so slightly. Yeah, the double turret now being taken by both teams. All right. And then that mini map in the bottom left corner. Yeah. Oh, the technology. It's there. <laughs> we have the technology. That is awesome. We can rebuild it. Shout out to uh, JD, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> JD Woo. Setting that up. But... Santorin continuing to group and play with his side of the map. Oh, also shout out to everybody else who may have worked on this. I just know that he's the one who said thank you. Zig actually teleporting to catch up with his team a little bit faster. Yep. Kind of teleport over. Uh, looking at the call as well for OQ. Uh, call on Jin, not that great because you don't make too much use of the health on hit. All right. Fixed attack speed really doesn't help you, but he's looking for that gold payout later and then lane swap. So this is an item that you will see come through a bunch of times. But Nash didn't get one, so that could be an advantage for energy later down the line. And energy a little bit slow again. Oh no! And Oki's gonna take it out. They're taking a lot of turret hits. Can we get can three we, turret hits? Can we get executed by a turret before? <laughs> Let's not have it happen again. He knows firsthand the horror of those early turrets. But oh my the god! Recall. Can they not take it in time? No, they don't get to take it! Here comes Mash and Gate! All oh, the turrets! That's 38 health. They're trying to get it. 38. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Tragedy strikes. Minor. Uh, actually, huge. Miss execution. That might be one where I say, you die. Oh, and take, go for it. You take the extra shots to die. Well, they do reduce damage. It's still before seven minutes. I don't even think a single auto attack could finish it off right now. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, if they had all stayed on it. Oh, right? oh. We can take two, <laughs> take another. It's faster than recalling. Who knows? Who knows? But still, we're talking about getting killed by turrets. Yeah, 1,000 gold now for Phoenix One, though that turret is going to go down eventually yeah. if someone so much as looks at it correctly. Energy or going to even it right back up. Meanwhile, Zig is going to try catching these waves on the top side. Santorin gets a couple of deep wards just to scare Zig away from this potential minion wave. While Pyrian continues to show that he's very competent, very strong on this Cassiopeia mid. Currently one health potion up. I don't believe they saw uh, Inori pass by mid. He's level six. And there they go. Okay, so they got to, they got to assume that he's over here. Come down. And now we're going to steal away the red buff, as you can see. Getting some deep vision onto Energy's side of the map as well. They might try to look for this tier two. Yeah, uh, level advantage here as well. And gate on the Zyra, you get to basically force your will onto the enemy team. You have the level six on your Hecarim. Three on three. Yeah, a lot of turret damage comes through. Yeah, they chunk it down to half, and a uh, lot of these minions whoa. miss. Mash. Yeah. It's a feature. <laughs> That's like a uh, super wave dashing. Oh man. In Smash. <laughs> Definitely deliberate. Isn't it great that things like that end up becoming a uh, normal strategy? Oh my gosh. Yeah, he could have won that fight easy. He just needed to teleport through the minion wave. Yeah. Slide through into the back line. All right, so Phoenix One now going to be taking the Infernal Drake. L cancel your E. <laughs> yeah. So they're going to take it. It's an Infernal One. Everybody likes the way that this one feels. Suck it, Cloud Drake. Just hey, saying. Cloud Drake is a wonderful oh, person, man. Uh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful Drake. Yeah. But that's first Infernal Drake, thousand gold in favor of Phoenix One. Energy going to trade on the other side though for an early Rift Herald. Having a bit of difficulty burning through because of the Spider Links and uh, the targeting AI on that Rift Herald. So, yeah, it actually shouldn't be that bad because the Spider Links can honestly hit it in the back for you. So if you take the damage, the Spiderlings will actually pop it in the back for you. So at least it's one of the people who used to be able to solo it. Yeah. And now you can still kind of, but it takes you it takes you basically level 11 to do so. Yeah. 
but kind of far behind. Significantly more difficult to do. Um, as you were just about to say, I'm sure Santorin is down quite a bit in CS. Yeah, quite a bit behind in CS and and a level behind now. Well, Inori is going to be about a whole level up over Santorin, especially since he's backing now. Mm, and I like that Inori went for the Ionian Boots of Lucidity very early on. The Ghost cooldown sitting at 135 seconds, so 2 minutes 15 seconds. A little bit under the cooldown of a flash and a half. You can go yeah. twice in the duration of a flash. And still have 30 seconds. Mash continuing to catch minions on the bottom side. And Oku actually heads towards the mid lane because of the freeze that Phoenix One have set up in the bottom. Oku has got the curtain call. I mean, if he can land some of those bullets for the Ooh, W. Quick flash from Pyrian means he's able to get away from the captive audience. Yeah. It's actually the uh, Deadly Flourish. I make that mistake yes. all the time. Deadly Flourish. There was a whole bunch of things about why are the names different? Yes. It's like the E is like, oh, maybe that should be Captive Audience. Or the W should be because it actually roots. Because you're captivated. And there's a flourish when the trap explodes. So, but they're opposites. Yep. Hit by the Deadly Flourish. Yeah, it just hits the, uh... it, it follows the theme of Jin where nothing he's, makes sense. He's, he's a little bit crazy. How can a grenade dance? <laughs> if you throw it right. Yeah. How does it get stronger when it kills things? Like, if you throw a grenade and you're able to bounce it, like, in an action movie, how does it propel and get stronger as things die? How does it explode four times? I don't think it explodes. I think it just bounces. I think he throws an empty canister of a grenade. Well, that's just... That's just rude. <laughs> He's littering on the minions. This is awful. <laughs> I mean, he is an assassin. I think that's probably the least of his concerns. He's a virtuoso. Ah, uh, yes. An artist. Whoa. Gate going very deep for the ward. He's going to be snared down. Kiwi Kid will be able to answer back and clear out that... Standard vision, as you can see, the fans currently thinking energy are the favorites in this series by 9%. Yeah, that's actually a little shocking there. Uh, P1, though, they do have an advantage. That turret did not go down in the bottom lane for energy. And P1 had just won the previous set, and you know that's got to be weighing a little bit on energy's confidence. You come off a loss like that where you were ahead. People talk about you have to get it out of the way and say, okay, you know, we had an advantage, that's what matters, and just closing it out is the next step, that's fine. But they spent 30 minutes trying to close it out, and they failed, but they spent longer trying to close it out than they had, than it took them to actually get that 10k gold advantage. Phoenix One finally released the siege on the minions in the bottom lane, the freeze on the minions on the bottom lane. Yeah, this jungle is theirs. Mash continues to play with Inori. Cocoon finds Mash. They're trying to teleport in. He's flashing. He there goes the curtain call. Here comes Kiwi Kid. Flashes for the slow first blood picked up by GBM. Inori's running from the far side. There's the disengage. A huge four man knockout. But Gate drops to Santorin despite Zig's snare. Cocoon is going to find Zig. But he'll be able to get out. Two quick kills once again for energy. Yeah, and energy even up the gold there. And they're pinging that bottom turret. Like, let's get this thing. It's been taunting us the entire time, 38 HP. And Inori picks up the smite, gets the wolves. Yeah, he's gonna see that they're finally going to be able to take this turret on that bottom side, controlling this side of the jungle. Blue buff is even going to spawn and denying that to a Cassiopeia. Could be pretty instrumental, but Pyrian looks like he wants to fight for it. Ping's now going down. Are they gonna try to rush this because they know they wanna kill the turret? If they can rush this down, I mean, they both have ultimate still. They didn't use it in the previous fight. Turret's already dead. Kiwi Kid is the first target. Petrifying Gaze is going to be able to get some he big damage. Pyrian catches up to Kiwi and does so much. Onslaught of Shadows for style points. Yeah. Kill some spiderlings on the way out. You know. It's like 45 gold. It's the little things. But yeah, uses the ultimate there afterwards. Really, the grounded there was the big thing because you can't jump away. Mash doesn't blow his flash to dodge the cocoon. Of course, coming out of fog for him. Flash forward, ends up taking him out. And then the ultimate there, 
Gate had already blown his flash. And then, yeah, Furion has to blow the ghost. Still has his petrifying gaze and doesn't really have an opportunity to ever use it, though. Yeah, so once again, energy off to a start with that advantage. Yeah, it's win kills. It's a little bit smaller now that the yeah. infernal Drake that went over to P1 definitely helps them out almost across the board here. Like, you're going to have a lot of AD and AP on these guys. Energy grouping up to try to take this Ocean Drake, but Phoenix 1 are grouped. And Nori's back. Actually, Pinsir, but yeah, they decide to free fall. And Nori's back in base. Uh, so they're going to give it up, and it's just going to reset a whole bunch. Ocean Drake picked up by Energy. And now one to one in Drake's and Zig heads back towards that top side. Yeah. So Infernal next, so that could be the second Infernal for P1, which would mean a lot, especially with the composition they have. Once again, Phoenix 1 not quite willing to overcommit to any hyper aggressive plays. Don't want to take any chances and are much more content to just wait it out. Zig runs all the way from mid lane towards top for three minions. As OQ is going to be able to catch it up. And they're continuing to farm it up. So we are seeing Mash because of that early freeze. He does have a mild CS lead ahead of OQ. And this top lane as well. Uh, Quas over Zig. Level advantage and this gigantic wave on the bot side. Zig not going to be able to actually pick up that. Goes over to Mash. And they really want this mid turret because they see that the side waves are being pushed out. If they could just jump on GBM right now, Inori has the ultimate. GBM would have to react. He rushes forward. Onslaught is going to find Ooh. GBM. He's knocked into the petrifying gaze. It's two members that get the kill, but five members are grouped up. Ah, a lot of summoner spells burned there. That was the ghost from Inori but also both out of GBM and they get the turret there. Phoenix one with one swift strike, get so much off of that. Very confident decision to dive that turret and pick up the kill, mm -hmm. even to get it back up. It was, it was honestly the best play they had because their side waves had been shoved out. OQ was farming top, Boss was farming bot. You knew his TP wasn't up because he tried to use it in the previous fight. So dive GBM and it's on GBM at that point to really just recognize that that is a possibility that can happen to him. Yeah, and that's the sort of play that Phoenix One would more than hesitate to make, would not have made just a few weeks ago. So already adapting to having Inori in the roster and showing that they can be a little bit more confident in their decision making. Yep, pops the ghost, ulti, GBM flashes backwards, but he gets stunned still by Pyrian. And then the E had already made contact. You're going to get knocked back even if you flash or use some type of movement ability. Uh, if Hecarim has already started the E animation, or the, at least the hit part of the E animation where he lifts his feet off the ground. So it'll happen sometimes. Even if he had flashed, he may have still gotten hit back towards Cassio. Instead, that's going to be minor advantage for Phoenix One as they pick it up. Still very even in this game. One Drake to one Drake, two kills to two kills. Phoenix One barely ahead in turrets because of that mid-tier one they were able to take. As Santorin will continue to clear out his side of the jungle, Phoenix One have got the scaling composition. They can continue to look for these rotations, look for the aggressive picks. They could continue to look for an advantage. Yeah, they scale really well, especially their support too. Like. I would take a Zyra every time if I wanted something to scale from the support role. When she gets gold and once you start hitting those six items, she actually becomes pretty much another mid laner. But you have to worry about some of that magic resistance because you know energy are going to stack that. Mash, on the other hand, going to go for the flat penetration. So you have to build some armor, maybe one item. Pretty much, I think Quas would want to stack MR and then purchase a Thorn Mail. GA and that would pretty much be his build. Ooh, Santorin oh. is going to greet for the turrets. Wrangle Thorns is dodged. Kiwi Kid. Oh, Inori goes in. Kiwi Kid drops. Period is going to get the kill. And now Quas is separated. He gets one in answer, but that's already two of energy dead. And they should be able to pick up Quas. Three kills for Phoenix One for only a turret and one kill for energy. And Phoenix One, they've been scrimming with Inori. They've been talking about how this guy changes the whole dynamic. It seems like when Inori's on the lineup and he's on something like Hecarim, he's like, go. 
And yeah. that's when they all just rush forward, Pyrian blowing summoner spells, walking forward, making sure that he's part of this fight and throws out the ultimate there. Gate almost goes down for the curtain call, but they don't get a turret because of it. Yeah, Gate takes a big hit as OQ's able to defend with that curtain call. The tier two is still standing. Here's that fight once again. Inori from the side, Mash isn't here yet. So it's another fight where Mash is off on the side. Gate does a great job, throws out the ultimate. The very bottom of it hits Kiwi Kid. And then Inori goes straight in. GBM gets hit by the ultimate because he is forced to face after the fear right into Pyrian. And he had used the ultimate on the cluster of people for the damage. And the fact that he's facing him is just icing on the cake there. So GBM gets absolutely annihilated. And now Pyrian 3 0 and 2. Cassiopeia, that, that's really what a Cassiopeia wants that 100% kill participation, three kills early on. Can't ask for too much more. Down just a bit in CS, but already has the Archangel staff stacking up a lot of mana. He's already up to 688, so that's going to be transforming very quickly. Yeah. With the Abyssal and soon to be a Rylize, he will hit his core tank items. Well, tanky <laughs> items. Cassiopeia's tanking, you're doing something wrong. Well, or the other team's doing something right. Oh, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> it's all a question of perspective. But Infernal Drake going to spawn in 15 seconds. Phoenix One trying to fight over Vision. Double teleport available for the top laners. As both teams definitely want this Infernal Drake. Not just to have it, but to stop P1 from having it is one of the reasons that Energy want it. Yeah. Like, having double just makes this gold lead that they have so small, but it's going to mean a lot more because everybody on this team wants for the stats that it that they, that they get because most supports are like oh eight percent you know ADAP not a big deal it's like Zyra's like yes please and thank you I, I will take that buff Zig is actually split from his team right now he's over by the banana bush oh curtain call goes down Furian's able to secure it gate takes one two three four hits and his solo kill but Phoenix one are gonna try to collapse and pick up a few kills in answer Zig, as mentioned, separated, will die. That's two kills for an Infernal Drake. Yeah, P1, though, if they don't lose anything more, then it could be worth it. But right now, that middle tier two and the pings onto the Baron. Got to worry a little bit. Oh, and Nori. and Nori. That was a very greedy place to be. Forced to use his ultimate to escape. Oh. Well, now they know that his ultimate is down. It gives him a opportunity to even consider the Baron here for energy. But I don't think they're that strong that they would do it Ooh, Mash dodges a hefty amount of this initial damage as Furian eats a cocoon. The wave is cleaned up, and Phoenix One are able to hold. Yep. And OQ, you know, big part of why that fight went the way it did. He was able to pick off Gate. And I love this build from Jin. When I first heard about it, I wasn't completely convinced because crit and attack speed scale so well. But we'll talk about that in a second. Whoa! Kiwi's taking a lot of damage from the Baron, and Ignite is ticking down, and Nori... Uh, can't get to him. Yeah, can't chase up. But yeah, the fact that there's flat armor penetration across the board here for OQ. His call went off, and he was able to get that extra gold. But the the Yomus, and then next is going to be a dust blade for him. But let's have another look at this. Shot number one. Shot number two doesn't quite. Shot terrible. 500 damage off that fourth hit. The fact that Jin automatically crits on his fourth shot of his ultimate and also of his just every four shot yeah he doesn't always have to buy critical strike chance because it's only going to affect three out of his four hits right mm -hmm. so he basically has 25 percent crit chance all the time why not just make those crits hurt a lot so he ends up going for the flat penetration when he has dust blade he'll honestly be critting people for upwards of like 700 it gets pretty ridiculous we'll see if oq can demonstrate the damage of that Jin over the course of the game. Baron is up and Energy are currently fighting over Vision. While Inori runs around Gate grouped up with Pyrian right now. He's got the Strangle Thorns on cooldown, so should be able to disengage if anyone tries to force anything. But Zig split pushing on the far side of the map. He's also completed his Seraph's Embrace along with Rod of Ages fully stacked. 
So Zig has hit his core damage items on those two. We'll see if he decides to go for a Void Snap in addition, whereas Pyrian still working towards that Rylize. Even in kills right now, even in gold. Completely different change of pace from game two. They might have caught out Kiwi Kid, drops the knock up, and Ori tries to go in. Teleport was now used by Gloss, and Ori gets knocked back. There goes a couple of bullets. Mash, ooh, he's able to dodge them. Oh my god! He was able to dodge the third one, but not the fourth. Huge oh, shot from OQ. 675, that last crit there, that's that build. If you hit a squishy, he doesn't even have his dust blade completed. That is, a, that is a single armor penetration item for himself. It does so much. That's the percentage increase that you get from flat pen. Flat pen is a ridiculous stat. And Santorin's too far Whoa. forward and then collapse. Zig is able to convert the kill with some assistance from Gate Empyrean. I actually don't know if when you're grounded, if you can repel. He's still trying to recall right now. There's the subjugate flash bite. Oh, oh Zig is burning down. Oh, Zig is burning down. Oh, 25 health. I think that got down to like 10. That was, ooh. Yeah, it got down to 11. Oh, wow. So close, but Quas no flash. Greeting for the kill. Still six to six in kills. And here's that play once again. Yep, TP starts coming through. Inori, instead of using the ultimate, actually just ghosts to get out. A uh, little bit of a longer cooldown there. And then, woo! Wow. Destroys MASH. And you have to be wary of that. Now that dust blade is completed. That's gonna really hurt. So it's 90 seconds for that third Infernal Drake to spawn. Phoenix One definitely going to be looking for that. They're actually gonna try to collapse Kiwi. on the Kiwi Kid. There's a culling. He turns around for some damage on the gate, but gets cleaned up. Oh, once again, the curtain has been called and that Phoenix One are gonna have to stand in a line. Get behind Inori. He's like, Whoa. ooh. Trying to lead the hitbox, but not quite able to get it. Meanwhile, GBM was split pushing in the mid lane. He takes down that mid tier one. So kill for turret. That might be looking at baiting the Baron here, but that's not your Scuttle Crab. That's energies. Yeah. Bottom lane turret, though. Zig is going to be able to take this one. It actually got weakened, remember, all the way back when there was a faster lane swap from P1, and they pushed this out and had Zyra level 5, and OQ was still level 2 or 3. So use that advantage. Now they pick that up, and this will be Infernal Drake number 3 if P1 are able to pick it up, but even in gold right now. So yeah. Both teams will be looking for the fight if, it, if it's honestly what they want, which I think you would want to stop P1 from getting it. And P1 definitely want it, so. Oh, yeah. Zig currently running around that side of the map, giving some old assist pings and Quas, uh, excuse me, energy now pinging it. Almost as if they've just remembered that that thing's on the map as well. As five, they rush down to this side of the map. Phoenix one actually just recalled. That means energy. I've got the fast track. Zig could be setting up for a flank just like he did. But Mash was like, Mash two. was waiting for red buff. Oh, and the Infernal Drake is going to go down. Energy are able to burn through its health so quickly, Zig. Oh boy, decides to turn onto Quas. Oh, no. Over the wall gets a huge fear. They can't quite follow it up. Gate Ghosts along with Pyrian. Flash Snare is going to find Quas. There's a Strangle Thorn. The bullet is going to go down as GBM finally gets it. Bullet number four finds Pyrian. He's dead now with its three versus four. Snare finds Inori. Four versus two. Flash Repel. He's going to try to catch up to Mash. There's a slow along with the Chilling Smite. That's going to be four members of Phoenix One dead. And the game looked so good for Phoenix One with their with their Drakes, both of the Infernals. They wanted that third one. Mash started waiting for the red buff. I don't know what he was thinking. And then he comes in late and all of P1 still engaged, which would look like a 4v5 at the start. And now Energy gets a go on the Baron and pick up another lead for themselves. Yeah. In the mid 20 minute mark. Baron secured for energy. All five members get it. Yeah. OQ is really big in this. And you can see, look at where Mash is on the minimap. He's all the way back there. Zig, you know, he catches someone and then they push back Quas, and then they all start running forward. Gate flashes. Gate gets Victor ulted, gets killed. And really Mash gets to Uses culling ultimate, gets slowed, doesn't get to do anything, throws a W back, 
and then he gets blown up. So all he got to contribute was very little. Gets smited. And P1 should not have actually gone for that fight at that point. Mash finally gets his uh, his red buff that he so desired. Yeah, greeting just a little bit too hard for it. But energy have been in this situation before. They yeah. had 25 <laughs> yes. minutes of practice in game number two of trying to break through Phoenix 1's Cassiopeia defense. This time, though, they've got a little bit of a different composition, yeah. so we'll see if they can try to break through this. I think their siege is much better this game as well. I think that because they have the the victor as opposed to the rise, their wave clear is better. They get to come towards these turrets and use the Lich Bane and pop them. And Jin, OQ on Jin right now, looking pretty good. So he can just set up his curtain call. He can get some poke damage down. They can start the engage that way. So energy have a lot of great ways to start these fights now where before they really didn't. And the siege from energy is just particularly good too. Mash did shove the far side, pretending he was a top laner for a moment, which means Quas can't quite go for the 4-1 split just yet as he has to build that wave up. GBM is actually on that side of the map as well, so this might be the next objective for energy, that top tier two turret. And energy grouping as five. They're not even going to try to split, despite the fact that they have teleport. Might just try to break it down the old fashioned way. I think Inori showed himself. I believe they know. Oh, yeah, there's even a ward in that bush now. War Phoenix one. There goes the curtain call. Bullets are going to hit Inori. Tyrion takes one. And the fourth bullet that poor misses. Plant. Yeah. <laughs> just quails over in terror before going down. Energy, don't know if they want to dive, but they are setting up for the siege. Going to try to break this down as the Miasma from Pyrian slows the minions. They burn through it with some help from Mash. Wasp waiting in the wings. Yeah. They're gonna poke out though, and like I said, much better reach here with the victor. Oh, Pyrian is snared. Yeah. With OQ also having the Jin, the Deadly Flourish, as well as the Curtain Call to poke them out. And yeah, Baron Buff's gonna help them pick up this turret in just a moment here, as soon as they get another mini wave to walk up and deal the damage. Yeah, Phoenix One decide to seed it. Don't want to take any chances with Purian at half health. So that's another tier two taken for energy. And with the third one GBM took earlier, that brings us to six total. They s just now running out of that Baron buff. So rather effective use of it this time. Not able to break the inhibitors just yet, though. Yep. And that's the tricky part for them. Getting those inhibitors and then getting towards that Nexus. Gigantic wave bottom for Quas. He's going to be happy with that. But overall, though, their goal is like honestly on the people that you want it to be on for both teams. Mm -hmm. Pyrian and Mash have gold. And then you have GBM and OQ. It's just who's going to use it better in these fights. Ooh, curtain call finds Pyrian and Gate. Bullet number four. Ooh, flash dodge by Pyrian. He doesn't even want to risk it. But once again, energy with an advantage. Getting the Baron buff, even in Dragons. We'll see if they can break through Phoenix 1's base or if Phoenix 1 are going to show us hero defense round two. Cloud Drake is spawning in 20 seconds and the pressure is on both teams to secure that as this is going to be the last elemental Drake before Elder spawns. That's true. I mean, if your P1 kind of don't want to take it because you don't want Elder to really spawn just yet. Yeah. If your energy, you want to take it. That's one of the things where when I'm a team that's really far ahead and Cloud Drake spawns, I actually don't want to take it because I don't want there to be a better Drake to spawn for my opponents. Mm -hmm. So you just leave it there. So there's never a chance of an Elder Dragon steal or anything like that. It's like, take out all the possible great objectives they could steal. Deny them nope. as much as possible. Yep, but energy take it because they want to have control. Try to snowball. Ooh, just outside the volatile spiderling range. 
but 34 and a half minutes in, energy three drakes to the two of Phoenix one, minor gold advantage. Still fairly even in items, as you said, that gold distributed rather comfortably on the carries on both teams. Baron's up in 80 seconds in energy, setting up some deep wards on the Phoenix one's red side of the jungle. They might try to collapse here. Snare is going to find the Nori. There's even a subjugate from Klaus. Remember, there's no tier two as it was dropped a few minutes ago. Zig still looking for the flank as usual. Not quite able to find it this time though. Baron in 50 seconds, and that's what these teams are pushing up the waves for. Energy trying to keep the waves on P1's base, on their doorstep, and P1, they really just want to push it out. They have no vision of that Baron area except for uh, the Scuttle Crab that's theirs. And will it expire before? Yeah, it's going to expire right before the Baron comes up. So it's not going to help them out. And they need to get back there and actually reestablish vision inside the pit and around it. Yeah, some very optimistic recalls. Phoenix One getting a few deep boards and seedlings, so they will get some vision on this side. And grouped as five, this could be the location of our next big fight. Double Infernal versus single. That blue buff is getting pulled so far away, and Inori actually Whoa. fights to use it. He gets snared and locked down. GBM pulls him in. They could try to burst him down. There's the curtain call. Phoenix One bit off a bit more than they can chew as Purian. Summoner heal is used. Gate gets chunk low, but Flash GBM. is out. Zig is going out, but GBM is burning down. Shield keeps him alive while Mash zones Santorin away. Wow, OQ gets the root. Inori is forced away, has to use the ultimate. And now they're chasing him down. Gate almost dies as well. The curtain call hitting Pyrian and chunking him out too. But Zig stands his ground, almost kills GBM. So GBM is forced back. And there's the TP. Oh, they're Klaus trying to get Mash and Zig. He's going to collapse in. Doesn't have any home guard, but Mash, he sees the troll. Oh, and he goes down. Oh, man. Looks like Quas is going to catch up. Zig is caught with the flash cocoon. Where did Mash. he go? Where did Mash go? What? They, they didn't know you were there, Mash. Oh, he's actually behind the tier two right now. Dodges the snare. OQ misses the deadly flourish. And Mash with the Yomus and an escort from Enori is going to escape. But it's five versus four right now. <laughs> Straight to the minion wave like Mach to the flame. <laughs> And the uh, question is, energy are running top. They're cutting off his means of escape. Yeah. Uh, so they're not going to be able to catch him, though. He's going to back. Yeah, we'll see what energy try to do with this advantage. Looks like it's going to be oh. Baron number two for them. Enori has got his onslaught and the smite of his own, but he's down a level. Yeah, there's. Can't can't try to pull Santor on Santor, and can he do it? Oh, he hops over, but it's not going to be secured. And Ori goes down. Yep. Secured there by OQ. And that looks like it may have been a final shot from him as well. Yeah, 38 minutes in, Energy with their second Baron. Wow. I'm going to look back at how big that crit was because. I believe it was. It was 938. Holy cow. And that's more than the smites of both junglers. So he crit it for 938, and Elise's smite, who is a level up, is 800. Oh my gosh. So there was not a chance. So the Raptor that he just hit with the last auto took 1413 damage. Yeah. This is this Woo. is the build that's all about that fourth shot. So he has the Infinity Edge to increase that crit. He has the Armor Penetration to increase it even further. So our Armor Penetration for this build is almost like percent crit increase because yeah. he has a guaranteed crit on his fourth shot. And now he's going to go for just a little bit more crit to try and round out the build, get himself a little bit of that extra movement speed. So despite having the Baron buff, Energy currently are... There they go. Finally 4-1. Curtain Call is going to find Pyrian. Oh, boy. Ooh, but he makes it out of range. Yeah, fourth bullet is going to miss. Zig in the top lane with his teleport eventually is going to have to deal with Quas. While the rest of energy, they might just be able to break this inhibitor with Pyrian zoned away. Kiwi Kid trying to keep them separated. It's chunked to half, but the inhibitor turret is still standing as the minion wave gets cleared. Flash traded for Flash. Yeah, the Cassiopeia Flash for the Braum Flash and Ultimate, though. 
and Zig had to back. He was clearing out the top wave, trying to make sure that they couldn't rotate there and use a gigantic wave. But speaking of gigantic wave, this is a big one down here on this bottom side. A lot of caster minions that need to be cleared out, and that's both bottom and mid here. Yeah, pressuring both turrets at once, and Ori gets chunked out. OQ manages to get a kill on the far side. What? Not entirely sure how that worked out, but that means they're able to shove forward and take the inhibitor. Zig gets caught in a snare. His Guardian Angel has been popped. There's a gravity field. He hasn't got a flash. He hasn't got a chance. OQ is unstoppable. With two members of Phoenix One dead, are Energy going to try to push to end the game, or are they going to make us wait a little bit longer? I feel like you have this Baron for a little bit longer. You have two cannon minions. You start to end the game. You try to get revenge. They're shoving forward. Pyrian dodges the onslaught of damage. There goes the curtain call. Pyrian takes one bullet. And Ori is going to try to block in front. Pyrian so low. He four. Hits him. 1,800. Oh, man. GBM is going to get another kill as well. The Nexus turrets are going down. Though Gate respawns, it is not going to be enough. Five versus two. Energy are going to take the Nexus. Oh, they're having a bit of trouble, though. Uh, Finally, they're going to take it. Yeah, Energy take the Nexus, and they take the series, beating Phoenix One two to one. And Phoenix One still have no series wins. And Energy was a team that, you know, they were going to do it. They were going to do it here, still near the bottom of the standings. Bringing in Ori and man on your screen right there. It made some difference. They actually had much longer games here. And energy, you know, at the end of the day, it is that series win. Regardless of how long it took, you still get that one extra point in that category. And they needed that to start yeah. climbing back up in the standings. They definitely did. They have been going through some trouble for the past few weeks, but finally able to take that series win, bringing them up to two to five in the standings. Phoenix One, as you can see, they played remarkably well over the duration of that match. Very close game two, keeping even for a significant majority of game three, but just not quite able to convert it into the series win. And energy, some very rel relieved smiles after a long huddle. Definitely well deserved. Yeah, it's a big sigh of relief there after yeah. you play almost about two hours, two and a half hours of, yeah. of <laughs> total gameplay. There's nothing quite so tragic as having an advantage for 50 minutes and then losing the game. Yeah. And then having to go into game three. Well, it was also a very stressful beginning because they didn't get that bottom tier one turret after the lane swap. Yeah. So you're going, ah, did we mess it up? Did we mess up the whole game? And ultimately they got some good fights. They got some great picks. OQ on fire with that Jin build. Yeah. It, even after the Yomu's nerfs, it's still a fantastic build to go with. Really showing some incredible stuff. You know, he has been under some flack recently because of his performance, and he's even admitted yeah. that he's, he's been having some he's trouble. He's given himself flack about it because yeah. he's like, I am not performing the same way that I did when I was in Korea. I really need to step it up and even apologize to his fans saying, you know, this is not what I'm capable of. I haven't shown you guys yet if you're an NA fan, so stay sticking with it. Believe in me, and OQ, you know, I think he did show up today. Yeah, Energy, they've still got a lot of good to take away. I mean, they had advantages for most of game two, a lot of game three as well. So we're still starting to see some growth from them, and that has been what we're looking for. We know that they are individually skilled. It's just been the team play they need to sharpen up. Yeah, the team play, and now that they have that roster, we talked about it, how Inori came in. You know, they looked a little bit better there. They looked more decisive. It's... They're getting some leads, right? They're getting leads early. They're playing the lane swap a little bit better than even energy. And then it's just using that lead, using that lead to do something more. Yeah. So they're trying to play through mid lane. Sometimes it messes up. They made some great plays where they dove like GBM, but it's the next step. It's figuring out what to do. Because right now, the plan for Phoenix One seems to be, all right, we got an advantage. Let's keep doing the Drakes. And they yeah. just keep doing that and doing that and doing that. And then the Drakes aren't enough of an advantage to win you the game. Right? They just flat out aren't. Like, They're, you're going to yeah. be like, oh, I have three mountain. It's like, no, we just saw it doesn't win you the game. Yeah. Right? This one, it's like, all right, we have multiple infernals. It's like, no, it's not going to do it. You, you have to actually be able to use those infernals. But yep. after all, it was a great series from Energy. Now, before we go to Dash, let's head down to the stage where Riv has the winning support standing by for a chat.
I am joined by Energy's Kiwi Kid, and that's the word I'm going to stick on after their victory, Energy, because that, a lot of endurance was necessary to get through the best of three series. Kiwi, I got to ask you, what were the comms like? What was just the mentality like going through this series against P1? Um, we play every best of three, like three best of ones. I don't know if somebody said that before. I hope I'm not recycling anything, but that's what I'm thinking. And yeah, we just, you know, we just keep calm every time. Honestly, I, I feel like over the past few years, maybe <laughs> my patience has worn down, like maybe a little. It's like maybe at 90% of a hundred, but you know, we just pick ourselves back up and we just keep doing it. It seems like you guys are able to break through any of these walls you have in front of you with these victories. You find the wins. If you will, what are some of those blockers that Energy has been facing, whether it be comms or kind of just getting synergy together, if you can share those with the viewers and fans? Um, I would say our, our main, you know, block is probably synergy. So I guess maybe, yeah, I mean, you need good comms for good synergy. So I guess, yeah, synergy probably, uh, like, envelops everything. Uh, we just need to all be on the same page, and that's what we're working on. You know, just one at a time. All right, we'll see you coming together slowly, but surely second win in that column. Going on for uh, your next game, looking at Cloud9, how are you guys going to prep for this one? Um, I'm going to do a lot of talking to Bunny and Smoothie, <laughs> see what they think is strong. <laughs> now, actually, we're just going to look over at games today a little, but mostly it's not going to be what we did right or wrong. It's just how we're going to talk to each other and how things can be more clearly just you know, maybe we should use smaller sentences and, and just how to be more concise. Just getting the idea across quick and making the advantage work. Kiwi Kid, thank you very much for the interview. Best of luck in the rest of your matches this summer split. And we're going to throw it to the guys in the analyst zone to break down the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Riv. Kiwi and the rest of Energy, honestly, kind of scraping by in a victory here in this series against Phoenix One. Uh, you know, relatively close games across the board, very yep. back and forth. I know that, you know, we've had our fair share of criticisms for both squads at different times. And then on the flip side, they've also had their moments of brilliance and they're, uh, and, uh, they're making their cases for why they deserve to be in the NALCS. But ultimately, that was a, a – Riv said it right, energy, right? Like in terms of this was an endurance Mental test fortitude. for both yeah. of these teams. Because especially after that second game, you just got to totally be out of it. Like, how do we lose this game? Um, based off, you know, Kiwi's interview there, it sounds like there's still some communication issues where they're like, oh, maybe we need to use shorter sentences or something, which would make a lot of sense for the issues that you saw where they can't siege correctly. And, right. like, if you can't communicate where you want your tanks to stand or when to walk up and hit the turret as a team, like, if you have those kind of problems, you're going to really struggle to close games out. And I think we kind of saw that. Yeah. So, uh, it was good that they got this third win. You know, it goes down as a match win. Yes, that, that, yeah, that's, that's matters. what matters. You get the victory in the series. And then you just got to look to improve, which is what Kiwi was kind of saying. Exactly that. All right, well, let's kind of work through this third game just real briefly. Uh, you know, I think the big thing that jumps out at me is in this game, Energy is the team that actually gets out to a slow start. They're the ones who uh, kind of bungle that lane swap, leaving the turret up with very little health. And so kind of handing P1 some early advantages, which they're able to use to pick up a couple early Infernal Dragons. Yeah. Yeah, they get the first dragon off, you know, basically that wave not mm -hmm. bouncing the way it should really. And then they go, and the next time they build up the wave to go bottom, unfortunately, they don't quite play it right. And P1 hands over two kills, and the game kind of starts, stall, you can stall out. Like, right. one team is, like, ahead, and they're trying to push it, and then they make a mistake, and they kind of, like, they, they kind of, like, scare themselves into yeah. to playing aggressively. And, you know, they still got the second one, and the game's kind of moving on slowly with some skirmishes. Some people, like, going for buff in invades, and that's about it. Uh, and then you finally get kind of this big fight for the third dragon, or fourth it, dragon. It was the fourth dragon of the game, but the third and third infernal dragon. Right. And and before we jump into that replay, I just want to continue to uh, I want to continue to hammer this point though of Phoenix One being gifted a couple of advantages in those first two infernal dragons because yes, although the gold was essentially even moving into that large team fight for the third infernal. If all things are equal, but you've got sixteen percent boosts on all of your AD and AP then that's actually a fair advantage that you have at this stage in the game. The, the, the gold value of those stats is pretty significant. And if you secure that third one, even greater at 24%. But they don't set up for it. I mean, the game tells you six minutes in advance which dragon is coming up next. You would think that of, of either of the teams, Phoenix One would be the one that's, you know, more, if it, you know, more uh, motivated to be there when it spawns. But MASH doing his red buff five seconds before it spawns is just inexcusable. Yeah, I really don't have, you know, some kind of 
proposition for why he would be there. The, the right. Infernal Dragon is so much more important. They're technically ahead in that game. They could probably have gotten control of that area if they wanted to, but then, you know, Zig's down there sitting in a bush, like, waiting, like, is my team coming, or am I just going to sit here? And they get into this, like, weird state, and yeah, uh, it's just... So with, with that in mind, let's go ahead and pull the replay up now, and we'll kind of watch it out. But this is uh, energy being able to set up around it a little bit. They did get there first, and even after the dragon is secured, that's when Phoenix One decides to come in and attempt and engage. Right, and you can just see like how uncoordinated they are with like picking targets. So they, they start from behind where uh, Zig is flanking. They root one person, and then Hecarim comes over, and then Mash isn't even there. Mash isn't there. They get the flash root onto Quas, and then Pyrian steps up to keep damaging him. But Zig gets scared from the Jinn ult and right. starts backing up. Whereas if they both just t targeted Quas, they could have killed him. Mm -hmm. But uh, Zig totally stops his own damage. I don't know, maybe his cooldowns were completely off, but I'm not sure. He was sitting in a bush. He should have been stacking them, ready to drop combos. So right. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but it was just a really bad team fight. There are a number of times where Zig was away from the rest of his team and would have to flash out or just mm -hmm. died for it. And at that point in the game, not only was it Infernal Dragon, it was four kills and then Baron, which kind of secured... That Eight. secures energy a lead, but similar to game two, they weren't able to take much off of that first Baron that they picked up. It was the second one that they secured, which they were able to use to kind of finally push into the base and break that inhibitor wall. Uh, and at that point, they kind of had a handle on the game. So good on energy for being able to close half out as many that barons game. and yeah. they won. It took them half as many barons this game too. I mean, so good on energy for picking up the victory. And as you mentioned, what matters is that they got the series win. They, you know, they, they improved their record just slightly and they beat a team that they are expected to have beaten. We got to move to player of the game. That's going to go to OQ six zero and six on that gin deathless, uh, ultimately. And sec even securing a Baron one with his own auto attack. Right. And then two, just, uh, his, uh, his ability to pop people essentially with uh, with his high damage output. Yeah, he really key. he really softened people up before the fights. Um, I mean, he was also cleaning up a lot, obviously, by the number of kills he had. But it was a lot of his Ws before were chunking people out, setting up roots. You saw he would often you know catch a Nori, and a Nori would have to ghost away or alt away or something. You know, and, and taking that engage away from him as an immobile carry, making them use it defensively is, is a huge benefit for him and, and his team. All in all, they'll be happy to pick up that victory over on Energy. Now, we definitely had some big plays today, so let's take a look at a few of your tweets. First up is from Game 1 between Echo Fox and TSM. From Final final Boss, if that's not a sign of Froggen's experience in late game, I don't know what is. Let's check it out. One bit, one bit. Okay. It's still full HP. It's full HP. Well, follow me, follow me, sweep. End the game, end the game. End the game, end the game. End the game, end the game. Get in here. Spread, spread out, spread out, spread out. I have shield. I have shield for all of us. Okay, end the game. End game, end game. Dex us, dex us, dex us, dex us. End, 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 end. Nice. Good shield, good shield. Now we have to remember that this was the second attempt. At, right. a, at a Nexus rush, the first one being unsuccessful. And as you mentioned in uh, the post-game segment of that one, the fact that they had a Jin on their team the first time around is what made it very difficult for them to attempt that Nexus kill. Yeah, uh, Keith flashed in, reloading, and then just kind of <laughs> stood there for a second before getting killed by Azir. This time, right. able to get in there, do damage. His whole team was with him. And with the Elder Dragon, you know, yeah. boosting them in, in the burn, it was pretty And easy. all five members hitting the Nexus. Right. Focusing the Nexus, that's all they need to do. They come up with the victory. Next up is a tweet from Lol S. P91, that Poe Belter Azir play top lane in game one versus Liquid was hands down 100% the best play of the week. Well, that's an endorsement. Here's that Sharima surprise. I can go, I can go. We can go, we can go, we can, go. We can win this, we can win this. Nice. This is, this is real. I got him, I got him. Nice. 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 Here's Poe Belter, huge ult, they back in, scoops them all in, and the model just gonna run rampant in this team by up and goes off. Got a sweet style zooms and many people on the internet throwing around the 200 IQ ult there from Poe Belter. I mean, it was absolutely stellar. Five man ult with the flash there, which really saved or well, I wouldn't even say saved necessarily because they they, they were doing were in, fine. they were in that game, but yeah. catapulted them. Let's go with catapulted. Yeah, that them. was just like a slingshot <laughs> to the finish line. Like, great, this right. is probably over now. They were running a marathon, but then they like hitched a ride. With yeah, they got they the dropped on the train, like <laughs> pop out. Like, oh, great, this is where I want to be. Right, first place, I'll take it anyway. And finally, from Cloud Nine versus Team Envy, I bet you can guess Flash Thirty Three C's tweet. Sneaky's sneaky rather with the pen to finish. Here's your LCS big play. 
have the damage. Vito's repels into the air. Impact left alone. A kill coming through for Sneaky. Make that two. He's keeping his team alive. A quad for kill for Sneaky. The Pentagon to save the game. Huge lead for Cloud9. Damage, damage, damage. Don't nice. dead, don't dead. Penta. Got it. I don't know. Nice. I feel like I'm playing. League of Legends is an MMO right there. It was like, I, feel, I felt like I was an archer right there. Yeah. <laughs> when, when's third person mode coming to the game? Because I want to play like that. That looks sick. Right? Yeah, that would be kind of fun. Also really terrifying, though, when like a Hecarim is ulting at you. Like, yeah. Covering your entire screen. Or just if you were anyone during that Pobelter play. Yes, exactly. So I guess there are pros and cons to, yeah. that, to that method of play. Well, we've got six matches on the books so far, so let's see how the teams are stacked up at the end of the day. TSM remains the king of the hill and still undefeated. Immortals is right behind them in second, fall by Cloud9 and Envy. Liquid and Apex round out our top six teams, and with their win today, Energy have tied CLG to move ahead of Echo Fox and Phoenix One. Now, week four of the NALCS isn't quite over yet. We've got one more day of action-packed games for your viewing pleasure. Tomorrow, the Battle Arena kicks off the day with Cloud9 versus Energy, followed by Phoenix One and Counter Logic Gaming. But our match of the week will be on NALCS2, with Team Envy getting a shot at dethroning first place Titans TSM. I mean, that matchup itself, we could probably talk about this matchup for hours, but let's not talk about it. Let's let the players talk about this matchup and as they speak uh, about how they think this one will go. I don't think anyone anticipated Envy being so good. I think they're a strong team. They have a pretty good grasp on the meta and they play a really distinct style. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to our match because I think it'll be really interesting and close. Having respect is in the same thing as being scared. I think everybody on the team respects TSM, but we're confident in our abilities too. I think when you're on a winning team as an AD carry, it's really easy to do well. Because they're doing well, Laud looks particularly better than like other ADs, but when I watch his play, he's definitely not very great. I think he's completely wrong. Sure, like they make me look better, but at times I make them look better too. That's the whole point of being on a team. I think I pretty much match him like mechanically, and I think I could be a better teammate than him too, so I think I have an edge on him. When I play against Minsoliki, when I play against Minscrims, he's not very good, so I expect that to roll over to stage as well. Strong words coming out of both AD carries that's here so walking standard. into this matchup. Yeah, what? I mean, that's exactly what you want to see going into the match of the week, is not just high-level play, but a little bit of emotional, mm -hmm. you know, got to stick Investment. up for myself. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, well, how do you view this bot lane matchup? I mean... Lot is putting up quite a performance in his first real split in the LCS. Doublelift, of course, has been a performer individually across his entire career, but looks very good on this TSM roster. I think a big part of it for me is the draft. Both of them have been playing a lot of Lucian, mm -hmm. and you're going to see how high in priority can that pick get. Is it ever going to reach ban status? Is it going to be coming first pick? You know, on red side, you expect early rotations. Are people going to try and, like, leave it up for trades? Mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting thing to look at. And I think just in terms of skill in laning 2v2, I, I would have to give it to double lift. Okay. So maybe Envy is looking for a couple more 2v1s. I think that could favor them as a team that really works well as a unit, um, getting out of some laning phases that might be detrimental to them. So... I want to take a look at one other matchup being the top lane, just kind of put a spotlight on that. Of course, Seraph being a huge leader for the team, a top lane shot caller, and a top performer for the split in general. But across across the rift, he's going to be facing Huni, and then, of course, behind Huni always is Rainover. I think that's really the most important point. Uh, you're talking about Immortals. Isn't yes. it TSM? Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah what am I, I thinking? Like, Sorry, Hauntzer. Long day, dude. My good. Okay. It has been a long day, but I, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Seraph versus Hauntzer is still a very, very intense matchup. Less so because of the jungle pressure, but more so because Hauntzer individually has been putting up some great performances as well. on the And with a very large champion. Right, that's what I was about to say, is, you know, not many people are playing Swain top. And right. I think, you know, obviously, Seraph has a big champ pool. He can play a number of things, but going against Swain is a little bit different beast. Um, and I want to see how Seraph can adapt to that, as well as the fact that TSM really work well as a team. They have people all over the map. So, you know, it is Beer coming to help out Haunters whenever he gets an advantage in mid lane. He wants to spread it around the rest of the map, and that's something that TSM does very well. All right, well, this is a hype match to be sure. My brain is clearly depleted, so I need to take a break before we come back and check all the action out tomorrow. That's going to do it for us. So for myself, Mark, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Get some rest.